hi guys welcome back to my channel so today i'll be showing you guys how i do tribal slash feed in braids slash whatever you want to call them but yeah so on the bottom half i do box braids and on the very first row before the corners i do not list box braids that's just what i do to make sure that they lay flat and now onto the braiding so i'm going to leave this video in regular speed which is not what i usually do but i want you guys to see how slow i am going to make sure that you are paying attention to like my technique and all that stuff because this style you either get it right or you don't and you don't want to mess up your client's hair because that's a no-no but yeah so i want to put it in regular speed just so you guys can see what i'm doing like how slow i'm going and how much i'm paying attention to detail because you want to get this style right because when it's done right it literally looks flawless so yeah so just see what i'm doing you're gonna see me go very very slow not too slow but like that's why when you are doing this style, make sure that you are charging your clients what they should be charged because this takes a lot of time and you need your coins. So yeah. Okay, so now that you guys have seen what I've done, I'm going to explain it now. So prep number one, you want to make sure that you blow dry your client's hair properly because this is one of those styles that like you need your client's hair almost like literally straight to make sure that it literally blends in with their hair. Because if you use natural, if you use their like, if you don't blow dry their hair properly, it's going to puff up very, very quickly and that's just not cute. So make sure that you blow dry the hair properly first. Second thing, you can either part with a rat tail comb or a duckbill clip. I use a duckbill clip because it's just handy and that's what I'm using to hold the hair in places sometimes. So that's just what I use. I quickly part it and it's just simple. It's quick and easy. Number three, you are going to need some sort of jam product because you are going to need it to slick your client's hair underneath the braiding hair. You want to make sure that the braiding hair is on top to make sure that the client's hair is tucked away and it's not going to puff up quickly. And if they do have a finer consistency hair, I recommend using a product almost like, I don't want like grease almost, like a greasier texture because if you use a jam consistency on someone that has very fine hair, it is going to weigh down their hair and it's just going to stick to their scalp and you're not going to be able to grab their root very quickly and it's just going to be a hot mess. So yeah, that's one thing that you want to avoid.
Okay, so now I'm going to part the next section. And like I said, use whatever is most comfortable for you. Sometimes I use duckbill comb, sometimes I use rat tail comb. But you're going to see me part this over and over. And you want to make sure that your part are uniform. Especially at the very top, you want to make sure that whatever sizing you're doing, it's staying consistent. It's very, very important with the style. This style takes a lot of attention to detail. So it's one that you're not going to get it on the first try. You're probably still going to have to practice. But it's one that, because before I got this style, whew, I'm still trying to get it sometimes too. So like, it's one that you have to pay attention to a lot of detail. So yeah, this is a bit out of focus, but I do want you to pay attention to my little hand and what I'm doing. I am being very intentional about where I place that hair. I am not just tossing it in between my thumb and index finger. I am making sure that it is laying on top of your natural hair to make sure that like when I'm braiding down the natural, the braiding hair, it's what's showing at the top and not the natural hair. So be very intentional with your placement of the hair. So although it's a bit blurry, I hope you guys can see what my hand is actually doing. And also when you are braiding, try not to make sure that you are dragging. Take little hair by little. Try not to make sure that you're dragging because that will cause a lot of tension on your client's hair and you definitely want to avoid that. Okay, so now onto the last braid. So if you pay attention, you're gonna notice this is a lot wider and it kind of looks hypocritical because I was like, be careful with your partings and stuff. But like, yeah, there's a reason behind this. So basically, if I were to split this into two right now, right? The very, what would be the last braid would be a, quite a tiny braid in the front and it could work, but the amount of tension that will put on that little section of hair will be way too much. And if you know me and if you watch my other videos or you're one of my clients, you always hear me say, be careful with your edges. We are not here to snatch edges. So yeah, so be very careful with your edges. So what I do is what could have been two, I just make it into one because realistically, if I made it into two, that very little braid that I will make in the front will most likely fall out and cause breakage. And that's not what I'm trying to accomplish. So what I do is I just make sure I push it back into two. And it looks a lot more needed that way. And it just looks a lot better than if I try to do a second one, which would just cause more damage. So yeah.
Okay, so now onto the top section. So as I told you, the section is gonna be falling on her face to one of her sides. I don't know if it's left or right right now, but um, yeah. So basically, the amount of hair that I'm going to be adding in this is not going to be at the same rate that I add in hair with the first section that we did because if you notice the first section that we did it's only about two inches or so long but the top section is going to be about four to five inches long and if you add hair at the same rate it is going to be big and chunky up there and the size it is not going to match the one at the bottom so you have to keep in mind the rate that you are adding hair to make sure that the size is uniform like all together it's okay if you want to add hair later on when you're braiding down to compensate for the lack of hair in it that's okay but you don't want that top section to be super chunky because it's just not going to match the first section that you did and it's just going to ruin your work and it's just not going to look cute so yeah keep that in mind Okay, so as you're gonna see me do here, I just go in and I add some extra braids in hair. And it goes back to what I said that it's okay if you don't add in enough hair at the top, you can always add in hair towards the bottom to compensate for that size difference because after you're done braiding, there will be a size difference after the person's hair ends. So yeah, so it works out on the end. And after this, I just go in to go trim and I dip hot water. I know everyone hates trimming, but it needs to be done as I always say. And yeah, I hope you guys like this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'm going to insert some final pictures and you can check the rest out on my Instagram and I'll tag that down below. Bye guys and have a great day.